Hey, Christy here from Loom Crafty Fiber Arts. Today I want to show you how to do my Loom Knit Pinwheel Squares. Uh, this is a bigger one and I'm going to tell you about this one in a minute. And then I have two smaller ones. This was made on a 5 8 gauge. This was made on a 3 8 gauge. So you can see the big difference in the weight of yarns and gauge differences here. And they all can be made on different loom gauges. This is the good thing about this. If you don't like working with smaller yarns and smaller gauges, you can definitely make them um, on a larger gauge loom with a heavier yarn. Um, for those that don't like uh, working with those smaller yarns. And I, that's the versatility of this, is, is you can do that. The only, the only thing that you have to make sure of is that your loom is divisible by four if you're making the squares. And I'm just showing you the video for the squares today. I do have other shapes, uh, such as this little snowflake shape I made yesterday, and a triangle shape I made, and this, I'm calling it a... Uh, pinwheel flower shape I made and it's got different it's got several tips on it I'm gonna show you how to make that in a separate video and then I have some little squares I made on this one the 24 peg 3 8 gauge Cindy wood out of cotton and I just decided to put a little lace border around that one just because I could and I wanted to <laughs> and I connected these just to see what it would look like this is so softest. I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby. If you've ever worked with it, you know what I'm talking about. Some of the softest cotton I've ever worked with. This dyed. I did, I wanted to show you briefly here. I did just only connect these on the tips. Um, you could definitely connect them together like this. It would be no problem. But you kind of have to turn them around and figure out. It's kind of like a puzzle. Um, which way they'll uh, sit together the best. If you want to connect them together like that. Uh, because of the little tip that comes out looks like the pinwheel and uh, this this little piece here I thought about making like the flap on a pocketbook or if you put several of them together you could uh, use it and make a beautiful pillow covering um, get you a pillow form and, and cover make a pillow with it just all kinds of things you can do with these but um, if you don't have a little round loom, like this one from Cindy Wood or this one, you can definitely use a long adjustable loom and move your slider like the sock 2 loom. Move your slider and count your pegs out. This one's 24. And um, I just counted my pegs out. Every six pegs I put a, a fourth stitch marker because you have to have uh, four stitch markers. It has to be divisible by four. Now if you had a uh, loom and you say let's say it had 28 pegs instead of 24 well you would put a stitch marker every seven pegs because seven times four is 28 you see where i'm going so as long i mean you know it would be a little bit bigger than these because you're going to have an extra peg there uh, you're going to be using seven uh every seven pegs to every six but it doesn't matter i mean whatever you want to do it's very versatile if you have any questions about that or need me explain what I mean by all that better, I will definitely do so. Um, let's move my other stuff out of the way so I can work here. Now, there is another thing I want to suggest. I tried, like, a, let's say, for instance, a 3 8 gauge. Normally, a 3 8 gauge is used with a number 3 DK weight or a number 4 worsted weight. I tried a 3 DK weight, and to me, these squares look better, tighter. Um, so I think that using the highest weight of yarn recommended for your loom gauge is the best. Okay, like this um, 5 8 gauge. It's recommended you use either a, a 5 bulky or 6 super bulky. The 6 super bulky looks better on the 5 8 gauge. If you want to use a um, a 5 bulky instead of a super bulky, which I think the super bulky looks best. I may have said that backwards a minute ago. If I did, I'm sorry. Then the number 5 bulky will look best on a half gauge loom. Um, as long as it's divisible by 4. Just remember that. Your loom needs to be divisible, divisible by 4. Okay. 
So I have all my stitch markers on here, but one. I went ahead and just put one on my starter peg, just for. Um, and these are made by, by the way, I'm gonna give her a little shout out. These are made by uh, Nikki Stewart, and she's made me some uh, autism awareness ribbons, and she's made me some um, little lighthouses because I love lighthouses and. If you want to uh, get in touch with her, you can message her and see what she has available. She makes beautiful little stitch markers. I love using mine. Just a little shout out to Nikki. And so here I have counted out six pegs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on my seventh, I put my stitch marker and then I counted out six again. And on my 13, I put my stitch marker. And then if you count out six again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you put your stitch marker on 19, and then you'll have six here till you get back to your starter peg. So there's my four stitch markers on my 24 peg loom. Now to get started, I am using a number four weight worsted, just like I used to make this one. And I'm going to show you two ways to finish the square. Um, I have the option of, let's see if I can find, here we go. I have the option of finishing it like this where you have the little I call them little uh, kind of looks like a wing kind of to me but it's a little line here of yarn I have the option you can finish it like this and I, I kind of like them like this depending for what application you're going to use because it gives it a little bit of a lacier look when you stick them together because if you put one um, beside of it you could put one beside of it that has um, this at the bottom you see what I'm saying so it'll give it a little bit of a, a, a lacier look in between there that one there and that one down there or you can finish I'm sorry I didn't mean to hit my camera you can finish it and not have that as prominent and I will show you how to do, do it both ways okay so here is our worsted yarn and our loom and we're going to go to peg one right here and we're going to make a slip knot. And I'm left handed so I make my slip knots uh, backwards. And we're going to put it on peg one. Okay. Now we're going to take our pick. And we're not going to wrap this peg right now. We're going to slip it for the just for this moment. We're just going to slip it. Then we're going to wrap around this peg twice which is an E-wrap. And then we're going to knit it off. Tighten it up. And then we're going to go back and we're going to purl this one. This one at the beginning will always be purled. We're going to be working in sets of six. And the sets of six are from here to here and this starts another set of six when you get to your stitch next stitch marker so what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to be doing a knit purl knit purl knit purl like you would if you're doing a ribbing okay so now we have this one purled and we're going to be increasing so we're going to e-wrap this one again because we e-wrapped it before remember in, in ribbing one by one ribbon you always do the same stitch over again on the same peg when you go back and forth Okay, now we're going to be increasing by one peg. So we're going to e wrap and we're going to purl because this was a knit, that was a purl, this was a knit, this will be a purl, alternating them back and forth. Okay, so now we've increased one peg. Now we're going to go back to the beginning. If you've ever worked a triangle scarf or a shawl, um, I actually have a uh, miniature shawl or scarf that you can make. You can actually make it bigger, but um, the video is for a smaller one. That you can make on uh, my page here. If you want to go back and watch it too, how I did it. It's a different stitch, but you can get the idea too how to do um, the increasing. So we're going to go back and we're going to e-wrap this one. Because that's what we did before. And we're always going to purl this peg. And you have to ignore my laptop in the background. It's talking to me. 
Okay, so now we're back to peg one again. We're going to e-wrap again. We're going to purl. And then we're going to pull this tail yarn down just a little bit. So that tip will be formed and it will be tight and won't be loose. Okay, so we have a purl, knit, purl. We do a ribbon, alternate. I'm going to increase that next peg, and it's going to be a e-wrap. I'm doing all e-wrap knit stitches. Okay. All right. So we just e-wrap that one. So that means we purl this one again. We e-wrap and knit, and then we purl. Okay. And I want to mention this video is going to be a little bit long. Because I want to make sure that y'all understand what I'm doing. Okay, so then we're going to e-wrap again. We're just doing a ribbon stitch. That's all we're doing here. Purl. Knit. And what we're going to do with the increase, we're going to purl it. Because we just knit that last one. So here we're going to e-wrap. I'm going to dip down, pull our working yarn up, make a new loop, take the old loop off, put it behind the peg, put the new loop back on. Then we're going to go back, we're going to e-wrap. So each peg, each row we finish, we're going to, when we start back, we're going to increase by a peg. So purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. So this is a purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. Purl, knit, purl, knit, and knit off, and then always purl this peg. And then we've got one more peg to increase before we start another set. So each one of these is going to be a set, it's going to be a tip like this. Okay, so we're going to e-wrap. Now, I do consider this an intermediate pattern, or for someone that has um, been illuminating a while. And my light is just not working with me today. Um, and you know how to do e-wraps and pearls really well, or you've done um, ribbing, uh, and you want to try some increasing and learning a little bit of that, this would be a really good project because it's, it's a very short project. It don't take long, and it'll give you some good practice. So there's purl, knit, and we purl. And then we're going to increase and knit this last one, which is the E-wrap. So we're going to wrap it twice, knit it off, and then we're going to go back, purl, knit, purl, knit and a purl. Now, I'll show you my little tip I have here if I can do it without flipping my... There's my little tip. Okay. Now, we got to get back to this peg. So to get back to this peg, and I like to do this because I think it gives it a little bit of a distinction um, from the tip to where this part starts. There's a little distinction right there, a little line. It may be hard to see on camera before the this part starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do purl overs. I'm going to slip this first peg and I'm going to do a purl over. Okay, and we're going to purl over every peg till we get to this next stitch marker. So to purl over, you skip it from the bottom, flip down, flip back over your peg, and snug it up, but don't snug it too tight. 
skip up from the bottom. Be working the yarn down, make a new loop, flip it over the peg, snug it up. Barely. E wrap around from the bottom. Put your new loop down. Flip it over the peg. Take your working yarn. Snug it up slightly. So we're going to do that all the way down. So you've worked five pegs. Okay? You slip that one. Okay, so this is what we have now. See that little le little edge just leaving right there? Kind of little distinction line. Then, when we get over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to treat each one of these sets of six just like we did here. So just pretend this is peg one again if you want to. So we're just going to remember we just looped around it. We didn't do anything to it to begin with. We e-wrapped around the second peg knitted it off because remember the first one's purl knit purl knit purl knit okay this is going to be the same for each set as we did for this first set of six so now we're going to purl this one if you want to think of it as your first peg every time you do a new set that's fine because that way you remember that one's supposed to be always purled i'm going to knit again And I'm going to increase. When we increase, going to wrap around. I'm going to pull our working yarn back down below our loop. Pull up that loop. And purl. Okay? So you get in the picture. Purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. That's all there is to each one of these sets. And then when you finish um, going all the way around, when you get to here and you knit this one and you go all the way back to this peg, which would be your peg one again, then you need to slip it and purl over one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Um, when I start doing the loom-alongs, we'll go in more in depth than that. And I can work and do several sets, but to keep this from getting too long, because it's already 17 minutes long, I won't go through that. I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to do all my purl overs, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to finish this up. Okay? Okay, I'm back, and I have finished all of my purl overs. And after you finish your little tips here, increasing, decreasing, um... We want to start the main body, which is um, this part right here in the middle. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to flip it over and show you what it should be looking like if you've done yours correctly. Now that one's going to have, the first one that you did is going to have a little more of a point to it than the others because of the way we knitted them on there. So now we're going to do a really, really, really easy stitch. We're going to do e-wraps all the way around. Now, I'm going to show you before we do the e-wraps, though. Remember I said you can either leave these little lines here, little yarn lines. You can either leave them on there, or you can make them less prominent like on these cotton ones. I'm going to show you how to make them less prominent. Now if you want to leave them on there, you just need to start, when I tell you what to do, um, to start knitting around to do the center of the square, you don't need to do anything except for start with peg one and start knitting. But if you don't want them there, you can make them less prominent by doing this. So here's your tail yarn, okay? So what you need to do with your tail yarn now, and I like to leave mine a little bit long when I'm doing these squares so I have enough to work in when time comes to take it off. I take that tail yarn and I pull it up and I wrap it around that peg right there, my starter peg. I scoop up from the bottom, pull that loop down, and flip it over and do a 
purl over. Now you could do a different stitch, but it won't lock it in there as good. It'll be loose when you come back around again. So I just prefer to do that and lock it in there. And that way it's not going anywhere when I um, start going around doing the middle part of the square. Then you can go around and every one that had that little loop right there, take it up. And the rest of them, all you got to do is put it, put it on your peg that's got the uh, stitch marker on it and just knit it off like you're doing an E-wrap, okay? And see, that makes it a lot less prominent. It's not there. You see where it is here? Pull it up with your, pe with your uh, pick, stick it on that peg with your stitch marker, push that down a little bit, and knit it off. You see now? You don't see it. You'll see it a little bit when you take the uh, square off, but it won't be it won't be near as prominent as these are. So just remember, if you if you want to leave those on there, you just don't do anything until I tell you to start knitting. If you don't, you need to do it at this point before you start knitting. So pull it up right here. Put it on that peg. Push down knit it off. But the first one, do a purl over. Okay, so now we're going to get started on the middle part, which is very, 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 very easy. All we're going to do is we're going to e-wrap. We're going to e-wrap five rows. That's all we're going to do. We're going to start here at the beginning peg, and you're just going to wrap it around with an e-wrap stitch and knit it off. Now, all these stitches, except for this one, all the beginner stitches for each little set is going to have purl overs on it if you did it the way I explained. And when you knit off, make sure when you do those purl overs, you didn't make them too tight because if you do, knitting off is going to be a little difficult because purl overs are a tight stitch. So knit all the, just go ahead and e wrap all the way around. And you don't have to wrap each peg. You can. You can do several pegs and you can do this if you want to. You know, you can wrap several pegs at a time. However you want to do it. But you need to do five rows of E-wrap. Once you've decided whether you want to leave these on here or not. But you need to make sure that you do that, that process if you don't want to leave them before you ever start your five rows of E-wrap. Okay, I'm going to do my five rows of E-wrap and I'll be back and we will be taking this off the loom and I will show you... Um, if you do decide to leave these on, I'm going to show you how to make the fourth one to work it in so it'll look uniform all the way around. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I have finished my five rows of E-wrap, and if you have done it correctly, it should look like this, which is hard to see. <laughs> Pull it down like that right there. You see the E-wrap? Now we're going to take it off the loom, and I'm going to wrap around my loom once, maybe just a little bit more, and I'm going to cut, and then we're just going to do a basic um, bind off, like when you bind off a hat, a drawstring bind off, and I'm going to pull it up. You can use a tapestry needle if you need to. If you don't like using your hook. I, really, I just like using my hook myself. We're going to go all the way around doing this. I will say something I noticed the other day. I noticed sometimes when I use my hook, my yarn gets shredded. So what I'll start doing is, this is a little hint for you. When you scoop down to pull your yarn through, Instead of, I'm bad about pulling it all the way through with my hook, you know, all the way to the end. I just got to where I pull it with my finger. If you if you do like I do, and that way it doesn't shred the end of your yarn as bad. And if you're working with a delicate yarn, your hook won't be get, getting hung into it as you pull it out. So I'm bad to use my hook to pull it all the way out like that. And I found that, see, it shredded the end a little bit. So I noticed and sometimes it'll get hung in here too and along the way and shred it or fuzz it up so I've noticed that's a better way to do it just a little hint for you but I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do 
every peg and then I'll come back and we will start to take it off. Okay, I'm back and I have went around and flipped it off my loom. Let's put the loom out of the way. And this is what you're going to have. If you turn it upside down, it's going to look like a little crown, kind of. And let's see, where's the... You can tell, like I said, this one was where my starter peg was. It's just a little bit, got a little bit more of a tip to it than the others. And that's normal. So what you're going to do is you're going to find your yarn which that was your working yarn and you're going to do the drawstring bind off and you're going to start drawing it up just like this and you're going to kind of start trying to shape it out flatten it out draw it up Just like that. Now you can decide how big you want to make the hole depending on. Now I will say this. I did this for ERAP because I know um, some people that are beginners um, are not going to want to do all of this all the way around. So this is like one of the stitch parts that I was show telling you I was going to do differently. Do different stitches. If you don't want this to be a little bit puckered like this. When you do the uh, E-wrap part, the five rows, you can continue and do the knit one, purl one for five rows. And everywhere you knit, you purl. Everywhere you purl, you knit. Just like you're doing ribbon. You'll do ribbon for five rows, knit one, purl one. Um, and it'll look more like this. And it'll be flatter. Okay? Now, if you do it like this, the E-wrap, it's going to be a little more... It might be a little bit more puckered, but it will lay flat. And that's if you're a new a new um, loom knitter or uh, have been loom knitting a whole, you know, for a long period of time. Uh, you could try this, and you might like it. You might like that puffiness in it if you were making a quilt or something. Um, if you put a backing on it and close the hole all the way up, you might could even stuff it. And make a pin cushion out of it or something. So if you do e wraps all the way around, then it's going to have this little bit of puckered look to it. If you do knit one purl one all the way around, it's going to lay flatter, and you're going to be able to close up your hole where it's not going to be um, like this one, like this one is. Okay. So that's the backside difference too. That's e wrap. This is knit one purl one the backside. And the difference in the front side. And you can see with the knit one purl one, the ribbon is more prominent. Okay. So it really depends on what look you want. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to be showing you some other stitch patterns that you can use. Um, basically, all of them, I'm using the knit one purl one for the tips, and then I'm doing different stitch patterns for the middle. So I'm going to be showing you some different stitch patterns you can use on some other shapes when I do the videos for them. But you can use that stitch pattern, any stitch pattern you want. I just want to show you the difference in the E-wrap look and the knit one purl one for the five rows after you finish your tips. Okay. Now you can see here, this one here has these little lines left. This one doesn't. You can, you can barely see them right there, but they're not near as prominent. And if you're making something you don't want them to get caught on, this would be your best bet. And you can do that in any stitch pattern that I show you. So now what we need to do is we need to, I'm going to cut this off just a little bit because it's frayed. Now we need to take our needle. Any needle will do. I like these because you ain't got to worry about threading them. Like, you know, straying your eyeballs. <laughs> and we need to um, I'm going to loosen that up just a little bit, I think. We need to go in two or three of the little loops there. And basically all you're doing is you're going around in a circle 
picking up your last loops where the string is through when you uh, did your drawstring bind off. We're just doing that to secure it and to hide it so you can't see it. And it'll, it'll tighten up that little hole so it won't, I mean, you don't, unless you want to purposely close it. I like it left open a little bit. So there's just so much versatility with these you can do. I mean, you can just, you know, you don't have to go all the way around and go around until you feel like it's, um, uh-oh, <laughs> wouldn't jump on me. Do you feel like it's secure? Let's cut that down just a little bit more. Now, another thing I will mention, too, if you do E-wrap, it's going to kind of curl up a little bit because E-wrap's E-wrap. You know, it does curl, but it will lay flat if you connect them. Um, but it will do this little curly, try to do this little curly thing a little bit, which someone mentioned making a bowl. Um, that might be helpful if you want to try to make a bowl out of it. So that might be an option, but if you if you make it like this, it's not going to, see, it's not going to do that as bad as you can make it lay flat so there it is without the little bar looking lines there now i'm going to show you if you do one i'm i promise i'm going to be done soon if you want to do one where did i put my needle there it is if you want to do one and leave the bars you need four bars because you got four tips right so there's one two three so you need your fourth one so what are you, what you do is you look and see where that line's going in at. So we have a row here where we did our knit and pearls and then we've got these bars here and then it goes in on the bar side. So you see it in the tip ends right here and then you have this line and then you have your bars and it goes in on the bar side. So what you do is turn it around, find that tail yarn, go ahead and thread your needle And there's my end, there's my bars, okay? So I need to go in here, so I'm going to go in behind. You don't want to go in the front, you want to go in behind because you don't want it to show. So, let's make sure I'm doing it right. Right here. Right there. So you want to go in that stitch right there, okay? So it's right there. And just go in, pull your, pull your strand, and look at it. Make sure it's where you want it. You don't want to pull. See, now you, if you pull it too tight, you're going to pull it in like that. So you want to make sure it's got enough of uh, extra room. And then you want to just, without pulling it, you don't want it loose either. You want to just want to work your yarn in. And I'm just going under these bars back here at the back. And I'm just going to work it in a couple of rows. And I'm going to put my finger there so I don't pull that any tighter than I need to. And then go in under here. And then back. And then I'm going to go back up. And you could go back up a time or two again if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. And then I'm going to clip it. Okay. I don't know why my scissors. They must be a little dull. So there you have it with your four bars. I could have pulled it a little bit tighter than I did. You just have to play with it if you want to leave them in there. There, it looks better. Okay. So that is... With the bars, without the bars, this is E-Wrap, a little bit puckered, still lay flat, but a little bit puckered, and the ribbed. Now, depending on how tight you make this center will depend on, um, it, it can even pucker too, so you kind of play with your center and see where that sweet spot is, so to speak, okay? Now, I will be coming to you again. Again, I'm sorry this is so long, but I wanted to make it clear and, and um, hope that, you know, I can answer any questions, but I'll be glad to answer any questions if anybody has any 
uh, you can message me or you can put it in the comments below. But I will be coming back and showing you another video of how to make the uh, flower pinwheel, the square, and the snowflake wherever it went. Here it is. I did this one with E-Wrap and you see how it's curling up? I'm not going to do it with E-Wrap. Uh, I mean you definitely could if that's what you want. But when I show you the um, tutorial, I'm going to do it with a different stitch. So I will be coming back and showing you those in the very near future. Probably uh, be doing one a week until I get done. And I'm working on two more shapes. We'll see how that goes. And then we're going to start working on a project in a loom along. Okay? I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was long, like I said, but um, I wanted to be thorough. Thank you much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.